There's a lot of mistakes you like to make. Why are you hanging your curtains at the wrong place? Mm, they're going in the trash. <laughs> it's gonna look cheap. Luxury isn't a price tag. Luxury is a feeling. <laughs> There's a lot more, trust me. Hello, how are you today? Let me just get comfortable here. <laughs> how are you? I'm fantastic, thank you so much for asking. So, today, I'm going to be going through five reasons why your home may look cheap. I don't mean to call you out like that, but you're obviously a bit curious. Is my house cheap? Does it look cheap? How can I fix that? How can I avoid it looking cheap? Because I don't want my house to look cheap. I want it to look expensive and nice and luxurious. Even though you mightn't spend a lot on it, because you don't need to spend a lot on it. Because you know why? No, you don't know the saying? Money doesn't buy taste. And... I will stand by that till the day I die. Yes, for quality things you do pay a bit more, but I mean, there is a limit. <laughs> and I like to mix, you know, cheaper things with more expensive things and it kind of makes it more, it makes ex cheap things look expensive. So um, anyway, that's what we're going to be doing today. And I've wanted, to, I've been wanting to make this video for a while, I'm not going to lie, because I feel like that's my, the biggest thing I take away from projects is everyone wants their home to look expensive and look nice and look well furnished and look well decorated but there's always that thing of mm, I don't want to spend like a lot of money on it or unnecessary amounts of money on it. Cushions, you can get cushions for such an affordable price when they're arranged properly and the colours all coordinate and the fabrics all look nice you can get away with getting cheaper items but it's a skill <laughs> to make them look expensive so I'm going to go over five reasons why your home looks cheap and then you can take that list and go into your home and go through and be like hmm I heard what James just said there yes I need to change my curtains yes I need to change my cushions yes I need a bigger rug make your home look more expensive <laughs> I will do a separate video on how to make your home look more expensive on a budget because you know that's what we like to do we don't like to overspend on things we don't need to overspend on and yeah so without further ado let's just jump in I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of nervous about this video because <laughs> I'm not very good at explaining things. I'm a very visual person, so I prefer to talk in like pictures and show like an image of something to explain it because trying to get it from here, <laughs> out here, <laughs> I struggle with. So bear with me, don't, you know, don't click off just yet. <laughs> I'll try to make it brief and to the point and simple and think that's the best way to do it because otherwise I'll get too distracted. <laughs> Okay, so first up on the list is wrong side. Let me get my pen actually because you know I want to be like a bit more like I don't know this type of vibe like I'm like the teacher or something. <laughs> wrong sized curtains slash hanging curtains at the wrong height. This is definitely I think the this and rugs and hanging art prints and hanging mirrors and hanging lights and there's a lot of. <laughs> There's a lot of mistakes you like to make, so come on, we're gonna fix them. Hanging the curtains at the wrong height, first of all. Why are you hanging your curtains at the wrong height? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know, first of all. This is the easiest way to make your space feel taller, grander, bigger, cozier, softer, and adds that like depth and texture that, you know, I think every space needs. And I know a lot of people struggle with, oh, my room, the room feels cold or it feels, you know, empty or it feels like sparse. It doesn't feel cohesive or complete. And I feel like that's what curtains add, like anything with textures, like curtains, rugs, cushions, throws, fabric. Anything with fabric adds that, you know, warmth, no matter what the color is or the style that you're going with by adding texture and like, you know, the kind of shadows of the panels of curtains waving if it's, you know, more, that more airy look with the curtains blown in the wind. I just think curtains are the easiest way to add in luxury to a space. So back to the point now, and <laughs> hanging them at the wrong height. You don't hang them at the top of the window. You, I personally, and I think most designers do this, hang them from the ceiling. Now, let me rephrase this properly. <laughs> There's so many different curtain poles as well. This is, okay, how do I describe this? I'm gonna give this as an entry level description on curtains because there's so many different styles of curtains so many different pleats and uh, fabrics and ways to hang them and curtain poles and mechanisms on the curtain there's so there's so much to it that you nearly need a whole video in itself to talk about curtains <laughs> and i don't think i want to do that because i <laughs> i'll try to explain them in pro anyway 
hang them as high as you can on the wall. So hang them as tall as you can. If you have coving, hang them just below the coving. If you don't have coving, bring them straight to the ceiling. Hang them as high as you can. Get that height so when you're in the space, it feels taller and more luxurious because who doesn't love it? anything bigger? feels more expensive. So if your space feels bigger, it's gonna feel more expensive. Also, another mistake with hanging curtains is not, the curtains not being big enough. So the panels on either side of the window. I don't wanna see little strips hanging down. I want like heaviness on each side. I want like a curtain panel on each side. I say at least 500 millimeters worth of a curtain panel on each side. It just adds that, you know, luxury. I've seen a few kind of rooms on Instagram. I went searching for bedrooms and living rooms and kitchens and stuff by just non-interior designers or interior designers if you get my drift. <laughs> and that's one of the biggest things I saw is the curtain panels being too thin and just looking very bitty and you know don't even bother putting them up if, <laughs> if they're going to be just a sliver on the side of the window. Even if you have to get two sets and join each two of them together on each side, just to add that, you know, heaviness and impact. Hanging curtains incorrectly, that's, that's point number one. <laughs> I'm just gonna preface this here before I continue on. If there's any specific point that you'd like to talk, me to talk more in depth about, let me know. This is just a brief synopsis and kind of run through of five reasons why your house might look cheap or feel cheap to you personally. But anyway, next point. <laughs> Lack of balance and symmetry. So I feel like that's something I've noticed a lot in homes is either people really emphasize symmetry or there's a lack of balance in the space. How do I describe this now? So let me set the scene. Okay, so you walk into a space and you, let's say for example, it's the living room because that's what's in my head right now. And the TV is, so you have your wall in front of you your TV is here, kind of off to the left a bit. Your immediate unit is underneath it, and then you have like a bookshelf here on that wall. And then you have your couch and your armchair, and you have all the steps and the pieces that you need to create, create a space, but nothing seems to be working together. And it seems very bitty or, you know, mix matched, and nothing really kind of feels, you know, there's, there's no anchor in the space. And I feel like that's the point of this, like a lack of an anchor or a lack of, you know, that solidity or kind of that grounding of a space because I feel the interior design, you're creating a feeling in this space. Like that's why there's certain colors that you pick and there's certain ways you place things. It's creating that energy and that kind of feeling in a space of contentment and relaxing and, you know, nice and everything feels, ooh, Mm, plush and you feel it's comfortable and I feel like when there's a lack of balance or symmetry in a space it removes that feeling and it feels like unfinished and you can f can't figure out why it's not working and maybe if I add a plant in here or if I add a lamp in here or another table here or an armchair here it might create that balance but it's all down to symmetry so symmetry what I would do is, in that situation, I'd move the TV to the center of the wall, have your media unit underneath, a bigger media unit, like make it bigger than the bottom of, than the width of your TV, so that the media unit extends past the TV, and you can have a few accessories on it, and just create, fill up that wall a bit more with less pieces, so that it feels less bitty, and it feels more substantial, and that's your anchor. Okay, point numero tres. <laughs> Too many accessories or in other words, trinkets. If I walk into a space and I see trinkets and accessories that just don't correspond or don't work together to tell the story of the space, they're going in the trash. <laughs> because yes, and a lot of people have very sentimental trinkets, like, you know, wedding presents that they like to display. And I feel like there is ways to display them, but they don't all need to be on the bookshelf in the living room. You could have you know, maybe a few items and disperse them. I feel like with accessorizing, you're telling a story, you're not just filling a space. I feel like accessories need to be more, more curated and formed properly. Again, like scaled properly and proportionally to that space that you're filling. Instead of just like loads of just little bits and trinkets and things all over the place. They don't really fit your personality anymore and they don't really fit the spaces vibe or aesthetic anymore. So I think too many accessories is definitely well, I'm gonna to say too many trinkets, 
but to make like trinkets in a way that's not like curated, like uncurated <laughs> trinkets. <laughs> Point number three. <laughs> Ignoring scale regarding lighting, furniture, art, etc. etc. Scale is definitely the most important thing when it comes to design. I think you if everything is scale Anyway, my camera just cut me off. If everything is scaled properly, you could literally have anything in the space. And if it's all scaled and proportioned well together, it's going to look nice. Now, yes, it might be everyone's taste <laughs> and colour is scaled and everything might work together, but everything proportionally will work and that will make a huge difference and it will automatically make your space feel a bit more expensive because it feels like everything's made specifically for that space, which is ties into bespoke and custom, which is... A luxury so say it with me <laughs> I don't know <laughs> this is the point to take from this okay scale is one of the most important factors to consider if done correctly it creates a well proportionally balanced space and finally point number five <laughs> buying into trends and yes I don't think there's anything wrong with buying a vase or a light or you know, some flowers or a rug. Oh, that's considered trendy. But I feel like if you make whatever's trendy your entire aesthetic in your space, it's gonna look cheap because we all know how much that stuff costs because it's everywhere and everywhere's doing it. Like, yes, I might have started off as more of a high-end item and then like H&M or Ikea or Zara Home have copied it and made it a bit cheaper, faster produced or whatever, whatever. And now it's in your home and your home is like full of that aesthetic and it just looked like Daniel Bernstein's house. That was probably ridiculously expensive to do, but it doesn't look very expensive because it's trendy. <laughs> and it's just like whatever was trendy, like that japan -D style just bleh, in our space. I feel like if you're, if that's all you do is buy into trends, your house is going to just, it's not going to look luxurious because also I feel like luxury is a part of your personality so I feel like when your personality is injected into a space it feels because luxury is a feeling luxury isn't a price tag luxury is a feeling and I feel like if your personality is in the space it feels nice and it feels comforting and it feels good and I feel like is that not what luxury is and I feel like that's why you shouldn't buy into trends because it just removes that personality factor in a space which makes it look like a store and not <laughs> luxurious. Okay, so there are my five reasons why your home may, might look cheap. Now, I mean, everyone's style is different, everyone's preferences are different when it comes to the space, but if you follow these rules and tailor them towards your own aesthetic and your own style, I think you'll find you'll be changing a lot of things in your home. <laughs> Again, these are things I've learned over time and I feel like I, I use these when I'm decorating a space. I've been doing interior design for the past four years, so I think I think I know what I'm talking about. I've also worked in retail shops and kitchen design companies. I've I've I have experience in this, so I know what I'm talking about. So if you want to take my points, you're gonna you'll thank me later if you don't. <laughs> I mean, you just you're destroying your own life if you don't. So um, that's on you. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this. Let me know what you thought of this. I mean, did I explain everything correctly? Did I explain everything in a way that's easy to understand? I don't know if I did or not. I, it's, I'll, I'll admit it. I'm not great at explaining things, but I'm going to try because I do want to help you in any way I can, because I know a lot of people can't afford to pay for an interior designer to do their space because it is a luxury service. And I feel like there's a lot of ways you can, and a lot of people are naturally good at this anyway. So they don't really need interior designers, but Again, I think it's nice to have a bit of guidance and a bit of direction when it comes to selling your space and things to avoid. That's one of my biggest things when I'm designing spaces is people, most of my clients at the moment have tried it themselves numerous times and have spent loads of money trying to make their spaces look to the standard that they want them to look at, but can never do it and they can never figure out why. And it's because of these points. Once you get stuck on this rash, what was it, the hamster wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get off um, so I think taking these points and these are only like a handful of reasons why your home may look cheap there's a lot more <laughs> there's a lot more trust me I've seen some spaces <laughs> in my time but let me know what you thought of this anyway in the comment section and which point are you going to take and inject 
and uh, what point are you going to take and inject into your space and maybe make your home feel a bit more expensive and luxurious and well furnished and well scaled and well proportioned and balanced and nice <laughs> let me know and on that note guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one bye